In this video I'll be characterizing the uh, crystal filter. Uh, Peter VA, VE3POA uh, discovered that uh, the filter, the bandwidth of the filter is very wide. Uh, we modeled this filter after the VidX40 and uh, he found that um, since we were using 100 picofarad uh, capacitors this filter in this uh, application was uh, well over uh, 3 kilohertz, almost approaching 4 kilohertz wide. And uh, other crystal filters we were using was, you know, between 2 to 3 kilohertz. So uh, Peter found that by adjusting these capacitors here and here, we were able um, to uh, reduce the band bandwidth down. So with a uh, 200 picofarad capacitor here in the middle of the filter, and then 150 picofarads at uh, the other side of the uh, two crystals and then 100 picofarad uh, ca capacitors feeding the filter were able to get uh, just over 2 kilohertz bandwidth. So I've gone ahead and done that so now all the calculations and all the measurements of the center frequency and the bandwidth has changed and uh, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to show a real quick way of uh, going and characterizing that filter to get the bandwidth and the uh, center frequency. So all I've done in this case, the uh, uh, the radio set in receive mode, and I've got the local oscillator, uh, which is feeding the oscillator, which is feeding the first SA612, which is the input to the uh, crystal filter. I've got that uh, connected to my channel two of my Park SIGGEN here and I know that uh, the filter is around 12 megahertz so I'm going to start with 12 megahertz and I'm going to scan around to find um, where the actual uh, middle frequency is. So what I've also got at the output of the filter at the other side of the transformer I've got my little jig here which is just uh, providing 15 100 ohms, a 1.5 kilo ohm um, resistor in series with my spectrum analyzer uh, probe and so that way it's presenting 1550 ohms to this uh, transformer which is transforming that to about uh, 230 ohms for the uh, crystal filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go go and start changing the frequency. I'll probably reduce it because I know in, in uh, prior tests the uh, frequency, the center frequency was about 1199 and change. So I'm going to decrease the frequency and I'm first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease it by a thousand uh, hertz just to get in the ballpark of where that uh, um, center frequency is. So I've got my spectrum analyzer here set up and I am sweeping between 10 uh, megahertz. So I'm not sweeping, my uh, span is set between uh, 10 and uh, 12 megahertz and uh, my bandwidth is set for 3 kilohertz and I'm going to go ahead and uh, start uh, reducing the frequency here and I'm reducing it by 1000 kilohertz right there I'm seeing a peak so I just reduced it by 1000 hertz and there's a peak right there so if I go into peak and I say center the peak it centers the peak right there and so I know that's approximately where uh, I need to be so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in reduce my bandwidth I want to get my bandwidth down as small as possible zoom in some more go back center it again so right there I'm seeing the peak there and my bandwidth is at 100 Hertz so I've got my peak, continuous peak enabled, and it's showing me the frequency and my dBm. And of course the dBm reading is going to be off because of the voltage divider. I've got 1500 ohms in series with 50 ohm uh, a spectrum analyzer, so it's going to act as a, as, as a voltage uh, uh, a divider. So the next step now is I'm going to adjust the frequency by um, 100 hertz on my uh, SIGGEN. 
So I've got my SIGGEN set up to uh, change the frequency by uh, 100 Hertz. So I'm going to go ahead and start changing it. And you'll see the peak rising up. And there's the peak coming down. So that's the left hand side of the skirt. And as I sweep, you'll see there's very little ripple in the passband, and there's the right hand side of the skirt. So let's go take a look at the passband again. So I'm right in the passband there, and if you look, you can see it's not changing that much. So the filter is fairly well behaved in the passband. So what I'm going to do to estimate the center frequency is right there, I'm going to set my display marker. I'm going to set a display marker for 3 dB below uh, 58 uh, dBm. So I go ahead and I hit display. I turn on marker and I'm going to bring it down. So right there it's saying it's at uh, 59 dBm. And my peak was saying it was 58 is 59 dBm. So what I'm going to do is reduce that 3 dB below that, so which will be 59 will be uh, 62, right? So at 62, I'm 3 dB down. So, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the uh, frequency to get on the left hand side, right when it crosses this line and on the left hand side right when it crosses the line note the frequency of those two points and the difference will give me the bandwidth of the uh, uh, filter it's right there I've gone a little bit too low right above So it's right about there. So at the left hand 3 dB point, uh, my frequency on the SIGGEN is 11996600. So I'm going to make note of that uh, frequency as the left hand uh, 3 dB point. I'll now increase the frequency to get to the right hand 3 dB point. And again all I need it to do is just to cross the line. So right there it's crossed the line. So right about there is the right hand 3 dB point. And the frequency in the SIGGEN for the right hand 3 dB point is 11998700. So I'll make note of that frequency. So I've drawn a little diagram here that shows the filter. Here's the uh, left hand skirt, the pass band, and the right hand skirt. So we started out by measuring the pass band. It's, it's was around minus 59 dBm. So 3 dB less than that gives us minus 62 dB. So we uh, tuned the signal generator until we got uh, the signal strength to be 3 dB below that to be minus 62 dBm. And we found uh, these are the frequencies. So the difference between those two frequencies uh, gives us the 3 dB bandwidth which is 2100 Hertz so to get the middle of the frequency the middle of the uh, filter what we would do is uh, take this value take half of it which represents halfway here and take that number which is 1050 Hertz and add it to this number and that's going to bring us and put us here so if I do that I end up with 11997650. That's the middle of my uh, filter. So because my audio is uh, roughly about 3 kilohertz, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, reduce that by 1500 hertz to put the carrier on the skirt here so that I can uh, attenuate the carrier and the audio will actually go into the passband here. So for 
uh, lower sideband since I'm doing carrier inversion I have to pass the upper sideband and so I subtract 1500 Hertz from that and uh, here's my BFO for lower sideband my approximate BFO I'll have to uh, tune that to ensure that I've got the you know the optimum frequency but it's around this number and for upper sideband I add 1500 Hertz again uh, uh, because a, a carrier uh, inversion or a sideband inversion and uh, gives me this value here for my BFO for upper sideband so based on these numbers now I can continue doing my testing and uh, see how it's going to perform so the next thing I need to do is uh, set my uh, SIGGEN here to generate the appropriate uh, BFO signal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, offset mode I'm going to set the offset here so I'm going to set the offset for channel 0 to be the the uh, BFO frequency for the uh, lower sideband which was 11996150 so that's the approximate value so what's what that's going to do is when I go back to the mix enable option it's going to calculate automatically the output frequency here that will be coming out of the second uh, SA612 and there's my uh, uh, um, BFO which I'll have to go and change and set that to be uh, the 11996150 so I'm going to go ahead and do that now so I've just uh, updated channel 2 for my uh, BFO and it's set to 11996150 and uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this so if I go down to save and I save it into memory location 1 and I'm also going to save it into memory location 0 so on power up it'll remember those values so those values are now saved the setup I have for this next test is I've got <clears throat> I've got my microphone here and it's going to be connected to the microphone jack I've got a jumper which I'll set to manually enable push to talk and I've got just the uh, the um, BFO the oscillator coming in feeding this uh, SA612 so I'm going to go ahead and enable push to talk and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a jumper here to ground the microphone so there's no input coming in and uh, let's take a look at uh, what we have on the spectrum analyzer so this is what I'm seeing on the spectrum analyzer so that's the carrier that's the BFO frequency I'm feeding the SA612 so let me set a marker there and I'm, I'm gonna set marker 4 because I think I'd like to use marker 1 for doing other measurements so there's marker 4 let's go back to marker 1 and we'll move marker 1 off there so marker 4 is uh, so I'm now feeding in a 1500 Hertz signal and the microphone's actually picking up my voice and you can see my voice being modulated there but uh, recall marker 4 is the carrier so that's the carrier and this will be the first harmonic or the fundamental of the 1500 Hertz that'll be the uh, uh, the, the first harmonic second harmonic so forth and this will be the uh, lower side so this will now be the lower side and this here will be the upper side of uh, the audio being felt uh, fed in so marker number one is here it's uh, 39 uh, dBm and the carrier is 4 so I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a delta marker and that will show me how much down the carrier is so right there it's showing me the carriers 
35 dB down, which is not bad, but I'd like to get that carrier down a little bit uh, lower. So what I do now is I adjust the uh, BFO frequency. I'm going to turn it down, decrease the frequency, and you'll see as I'm doing that, you see the the peaks here dropping. This is all shifting this way. It's all shifting this way. This peak hasn't really dropped. The fundamental for the 1500 Hz hasn't dropped. This is dropping, so which is good because we're now on the left-hand skirt of the uh, uh, crystal filter. So I'm going to continue dropping the frequency. And right there you could see the fundamental starting to come down. So I'm going to try and maximize the fundamental. So right about there. And my carrier is now here. So let me use my delta marker again. Let me take, uh, where's my, here's marker 1. Set a delta. So now my carrier is uh, 47 dB down, so which is uh, pretty good. So my carrier is, is well down into the weeds here and I've got my uh, fundamental and my first harmonic and second harmonic are now in the pass band and probably the skirt for this is over here, the right hand skirt is probably over here and we're right on the skirt here for the left hand side. So at that point, my uh, frequency, uh, the BFO frequency of my signal generator is where I need that to be for lower sideband. So on my SIGGEN it's showing 11995250. So that will be my uh, BFO for my uh, lower sideband. And basically I do the same thing for the upper sideband. Uh, except I, I reverse it and I'll get the uh, BFO for the uh, the upper sideband. One thing to note is I'm using the frequency displayed here uh, as my uh, reference. I'm not using the frequency on my uh, SIGGEN. I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. One, it's uh, this uh, device is going to be ultimately controlling the radio, so I want to know what the frequency it thinks it's putting out. So it's all relative to the SIGGEN. My frequency that my SIGGEN is putting out is going to be a little bit different from my uh, spectrum analyzer because number one, my spectrum analyzer I've got a, a certain resolution. I've set the bandwidth to be uh, right now the bandwidth is set to 100 Hertz so my spectrum analyzer could be off as much as 100 Hertz from this plus whatever um, error there is uh, with the SI5351 here so I could be off you know by 100, 120 Hertz so I think I'd rather use this number here uh, as gospel and uh, uh, continue uh, using this number as the actual uh, uh, BFO for the lower sideband. I'm now going to repeat the procedure for the uh, upper sideband. So the first thing I did was I dialed in here the estimated uh, frequency, the BFO for the uh, upper sideband. And uh, I've got the microphone grounded. I've got push to talk enabled. And uh, let's go take a look and see what the spectrum analyzer says. So the spectrum analyzer here is showing the carrier. Uh, that's the carrier there at 4. It's uh, 100 or so dBm, which is uh, uh, very low. But I'm going to go ahead now and feed a 1500 hertz signal into the microphone. So I'm feeding a 1500 hertz signal into the microphone. There's my marker there, 4. So that's my carrier. And this is the fundamental on the upper sideband. And here's the fundamental for the lower sideband. And uh, the first harmonic, second harmonic, 
for that 1500 Hertz tone. So let's take a look and see how far down our carrier is. So let's go on marker 1. Let's put marker 1 on my peak, set it to delta, go over to the carrier, and it's showing I'm only down, the carrier's only down minus 27 dB down, so I'd like to get that lower down. So, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the beat frequency um, to get this whole spectrum to shift this way and get these two peaks here to be more on the skirt uh, to get that attenuated while trying to keep these signals as large as possible. So you can see the spectrum is slowly moving. And right there you can see the fundamental decreasing. So let's go up and get right when it so right about there, right about there, it's at its uh, it's at its maximum, and this is at the minimum. So let's go ahead and let's measure how far down the carrier is now. So we go back to delta. And the carrier is now down minus 42 minus 43 dB which is pretty good so uh, at that point I know that uh, my carrier is, is well down below my um, uh, fundamental and and the harmonics so at that point I know what the uh, beat frequency oscillator is for the upper sideband so here's the frequency for the upper sideband so this now becomes the BFO for my upper sideband just in closing, one thing to note, um, if you've got this board set and you've got uh, the push to talk enabled, you've got all of the relays turned on and when these relays are turned on, if they're turned on for a significant amount of time, they actually get warm. You could touch them and you can feel they start getting warm. So uh, try not to keep the push to talk enabled for a very long time because you may uh, eventually burn out these relays.